Here, we will see a very curious phenomenon from optics that was observed in London in 2013, where uh, the sun rays reflected from a building with a curved facade got focused in a small area, and thereby the heat accumulated there, the temperature rose, and that led to certain problems. We will take an example of a building with curved facade. Of course, this is not the way the building in London was curved. It was curved about a different axis, but we are just understanding a phenomenon with this simplistic model. So here is a building, we are looking at it sideways and this is the way its facade is gently curved. And now let us see what happens when sun rays strike it. Sun rays as you know come from virtually infinite distance and therefore uh, they become parallel to each other by the time they come here. So even when the sun is going to rise in the sky or maybe it is about to set, uh, the rays will still remain parallel. But although the incident rays are parallel to each other, the window panes that they are striking are not parallel, they are not coplanar and that makes the reflected rays non-parallel. So the reflected rays are going to intersect each other. This is the way the reflected rays would look. Now let us trace this point of intersection of two reflected rays and what kind of path it traces. So I am going to make the sun rise in the sky and now you can see the two reflected rays are moving, their point of intersection is moving and at some point of time during the day it passes through the red car. Earlier during that day maybe it passed through this green car as well. So we are getting a curve, a locus, a path which may strike the ground level up to two times in a day. So what is that curve and how can we figure it out? Let us start with the two window panes P1 and P2 uh, making an angle delta say between them and these are the two incident rays I1 and I2. We'll draw normals where they strike N1 and N2 and as you can see since the panes are not parallel to each other the true normals are not parallel. Then we'll show the angles of incidence. So angle of incidence here is theta but this would be less by this amount delta so theta minus delta. Then we'll construct the same angles on the other side of uh, the normal, that is angle of reflection, which will help us figure out the reflected rays, R1 and R2. And you can see they are intersecting in this point, we'll call this as F for focus. Now this looks pretty complicated. How can we analyze this simply? We can do that by recalling the phenomenon we studied earlier, that if a ray is striking a mirror, and if the mirror turns through some angle, say delta, then the reflected ray turns through twice that amount, 2 delta. So we can consider these two window panes not as two separate reflectors but two positions of the same reflector. So if the reflector has turned through angle delta, the reflected ray must turn through the angle 2 delta. So that must be the angle between these two reflected rays. Interestingly, since this angle is fixed, because the panes are fixed on that building, the angle between reflected ray will also be fixed. So wherever the sun may be throughout the day, the angle between these two reflected rays will all the time remain 2 delta. And this is going to help us figure out the locus or the path or the curve traced by this focus point. Let's look at the simplified geometry now. So I'll start with the two window panes, but instead of the showing the panes, I have shown only the points where the sun rays strike and have connected the points P1, P2 with a straight line. So these are our incident rays. Then we have drawn normals, we have shown angles of incidence, we have constructed angles of reflection and that makes the angle of 2 theta at this point and 2 times theta minus delta at this point. That helps us draw these reflected rays and as before they are going to meet in a point that we called as F for focus. Then we will consider this triangle F P, P2 over here and the external angle of this triangle we can figure out these two are parallel lines parallel rays so if this angle is 2 theta even this angle would be twice of theta and we know this internal angle so the other can be figured out 2 theta minus 2 times theta minus delta would give us this angle which turns out to be 2 times delta as expected. So this leads to uh, this simplified diagram over here. Let's focus on that. So we have a segment P1, P2 and a point F which could be moving in space but yet the lines that join F to P1 and P2 make a constant angle between them. 
in other words the segment p1 p2 is subtending a fixed angle at f when does that happen well that happens in a circle if we have a circle uh, like this passing through p1 p2 and f then p1 p2 is a chord and that chord will subtend a constant angle at any point on this circle so the point f must be moving along a circle finally let us come back to our original diagram over here and we will draw a circle that passes through these two points which we called as p1 and p2 earlier and the point of intersection of the two reflected rays say this is that circle and we'll confirm that our point of intersection indeed follows that circle so this is the path of f we are sort of cross checking it with the circle and it is indeed following that circle of course we must bear in mind that this was a highly simplified analysis number one the sun is not really confined to this plane in reality it is going to come out of the plane as well and therefore this curve is not going to be a planar curve like a circle but more like a 3d curve like a helix number two we have considered only two planes here at a time while the entire building is going to reflect so that's going to be a pretty complex analysis but at least this gave us some uh, insight into the phenomenon like how many times in a day we can expect uh, the focus uh, to fall at the ground level and so on in the next clip we'll be using optics and flat mirrors again to find a solution to this problem